Hi, this is George from Upfish, your marketing automation expert. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Apollo, find email and instantly, and Airtable, of course, to basically find lots and lots of leads at scale for different clients, different campaigns, but only using one automation and one Airtable base. So what is the reason for this? The reason being, if you are an agency, for example, you might have multiple different clients. So we look here at this video, just as an example, none of these are real companies except for the first one. But you know, let's just say I, I'm running emails for Upfish Automations, Upfish, Upfishy, Downfish, Sidefish, Diagonalfish, all of this. Um, and all of these different companies have different products, they have different people they need to target. Um, I want to manage this in one place, this one Airtable, but I want it to make sense. So it's not just a huge database and it's like, oh, who does this person belong to? Which company and which campaign? What's going on here? So essentially what this is gonna do is we're going to have these clients. So let's just um, say that I've made a new one up called uh, George, um, uh, George Industries, for example. Okay, let's just say that this is a um, an active client I have here. So let's just say there's George Industries. And then I'm saying to say, all right, I need to make a campaign for this person. Who does George Industries want to target? They want to target CTOs in Spain. And what am I using? Am I using uh, Google or am I using Apollo? Uh, in this case, I'll say I'm using Apollo. So I'll mark this as um, Apollo. I'll say the campaign is active and I'll just copy and paste in a, um, a, an Apollo search field. I go into Apollo, I make my searches and then I'll just add it in here. Uh, what happens next is, as you've seen from a previous video, um, a, a make automation will convert this search field into a usable API and it's going to find a whole bunch of people and add them. We also need all of these people to go to an instantly campaign. So, uh, oh, we've already got this sorted out. So here we have the, the client it's attached to. Uh, no, it's not Downfish. This is, what was it? George Industries, okay, and I'll say, okay, the campaign from instantly I want to send them to, because this is synced, if you, if we have a, another video which shows you how to sync all of your instantly campaigns, so you get them in this drop down box. So I'll say, okay, this is um, a great big test is the campaign. Uh, so then I have my instantly ID, I have the client, I have the campaign, I have the Apollo search term, and this means that the automation can then start collecting people. And I'll add it into a CRM here, where I'll be able to say, all right, I'll have their status, the enriched information about the person, and also as well, the company that they're attached to, the campaign that they're attached to, and any other information. So this is the end goal, and how do we get there? Uh, it is through NA10. Uh, the reason we're using NA10 for this one is because uh, we're gonna be doing potentially thousands of operations every day. So the limits of make will, far, will far surpass them. Um, it's just a lot easier to do it this way. Um, so what are the steps here? The first one is uh, a trigger. Here I have this as just a scheduler trigger, just because I haven't actually changed it yet. If you were doing this, you would probably want to have it run on intervals of at least uh, 20 minutes, because there's a certain amount of API calls you can make per hour within Apollo, depending on your plan. But since all the plans are different, I can't blanket tell you how often to schedule this. Uh, you just have to figure it out for yourself. Uh, but the next stage after this, thank God, it gets fairly easy. So here we have check campaigns. This is an Airtable record. We're essentially looking for our base, our sales pack, and we're looking at the campaign tab. And we're just searching to see, um, we're searching to see who is on our active Apollo list. So within our CRM here, I have uh, the campaign tab. And I have one here called Active Apollo. So this is basically when I'm searching Apollo. So I'm not doing a CSV search or a LinkedIn search or anything else. And it's active and the client is active. The reason I put in the extra thing for the client, because here you might have clients in different stages. You might have someone who is in a, a warming phase or a setup phase or they've canceled their contract. This way, let's just imagine George Industries, they're active. They'll be in here. They'll be their campaign here is their CTOs in Spain. But if they stop paying me for whatever reason, and I say they are now inactive, they disappear from the campaign, the automation stops. So it's just a little, a little safety measure in there to make sure that you're not running campaigns for people who you shouldn't be running campaigns for. So as long, as long as the client is active and the campaign is active, it will keep on going. Okay, so that's what that list does here. And it will return you the information of, so here's an example of some, some campaigns. So here we have uh, the API call that it's going to make. It's looking for, in this case, marketing people in Portugal, in the UK, Estonia. Okay, so I have the API call. Um, now, next is a uh, increased start page. So this is just a simple JavaScript. What this does is it takes the start page, because when you're making an Apollo search, 
let's just say there's 100 pages of results. You want to find page one first, then page two, then page three, then page four, then page five. And that's all that's going to do. It's going to take the start page from the previous run and increase it by one. So the next time it runs, it's the next page. So pretty simple. You, you can just pause it and uh, type this all out or just go to OpenAI and say, hey, I need a, a JavaScript. I need a JavaScript code to increase something by one and we'll figure it out for you. So pretty straightforward. Okay. After it's increased the start page, it updates the air table with the new start page. So the next time it runs, it will have it will have value two instead of value one. Uh, the next one is to split out the fields of the API call, uh, just purely because uh, I have one item here. You might have multiple, 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 multiple items, um, and it's just good because uh, I'm kind of new to NA10. You might actually need to split out. It might treat each run individually, but I like to add this extra module in there just to be 100% certain something is going to happen for me. Uh, so the next stage then is to make a call to Apollo. So we're making a mixed people search uh, and in the body, essentially what we have to do is add in the page number. So this is what we're getting from, um, from the very first set of results. So not the results from the JavaScript code, but from the very first uh, start page in the first air table. And then uh, the API call that we have here. So it makes a call to um, this search field and then it will return all of the results. Okay, so here there's an example. Okay, it's uh, made a search for this one and it's found all of these various people. So it's gonna find 100 at a time since I put the per page at 100. And then, and then we have our first uh, conditional branch here. So we have an if function here. So basically, if the start page is less than or equal to the end page, Okay, and the end page is essentially, it's saying that there are 86 pages. So start page is the page we're searching and the end page is what the uh, API is telling us is the, the final page of results. If it's less than or equal to it, it means there's still more people to find. So we keep on finding them. If the start page is not less than the end page, then it means we finished, we finished the results. We can automatically end the campaign. So this Airtable function, all this does is it matches the ID and it just updates it from active to, oops, here you see inactive. So this will mean that the next time it runs, it won't waste you any runs or Airtable, uh, not Airtable, Apollo credits running something where there's no more new results. So it'll just be like, right, this is done. Campaign's finished, try and find something else. So that's what this if does. But assuming that there are people still, then the next step is to separate the items. So this one here is just basically splitting out the people filter. So that array of 100 items becomes um, just, you know, miniature, miniature items here. Okay. Oops. Where did it go? It was weird. Okay. So we separate the items. All right. And then here I have a filter that I put in place uh, just to make sure that the data is good because Apollo is pretty useful, but at the same time, if I don't have a website for somebody, then it's going to be hard to enrich them or get any information and know that they're the right person. If they don't have uh, a name, so for example, you might have like a name unknown or undefined, uh, or it might be like Mark and then last name is M. And then that's again, it's, it's no good to me. So I basically, I want to have a last name that actually exists. So I have this reject max in there. I want them to have a full name, so it's not empty, and I want them to have a website. So provided that the data matches that, and most of the time it will, like at least 90% of the time they are kept. And it, okay, and then it goes into find email. So find email uh, is a really, really, really effective tool. It's very good at finding email addresses and it basically, if it comes back, uh, they, they also verify them for you. So you don't need to spend extra credits on a verifying service or run extra operations, sending information to a verifying service. If, if the email comes back in find email, then it is a good email. So this is why I like using find email. But basically we make a search to them to say, hey, uh, we put in the API key, of course, I've deleted mine, but you'll put in, here is the person's name from, from Apollo, and this is their domain. Again, I'm only letting people through if they have a domain, because otherwise I won't be able to find an email address for them. Um, and just take a step back here, the reason I'm using find email instead of Apollo is because Apollo, to find people is very good. To enrich emails, it's less accurate, and it's also very expensive compared to find email, at least in my opinion. So to do this at scale, we'll be using find email. And essentially, yeah, we put in the name, we put in that person's domain that we got from uh, all of our Apollo results. And then if something works, then we get this result. So we get someone's email address and if that works, then we have a, we need to start adding them to a campaign and also add them to a CRM. So I have an if function here to say, if the email address is not empty, so if it has found an email, then we can continue. 
If it hasn't, I've left this blank. If you want, you can set up a waterfall cadence here. So you could add in, okay, if find email, didn't find an email, let's send them to Prospio. Let's send them to Datagma. Let's send them to People Data Labs. Let's send them to Hunter. You could do this as many times as you want on repeat. I think it's uh, unnecessary, especially if, you know, if you're trying to find 10,000 people, then an extra like 40 people is not going to make any huge difference to your bottom line, but entirely up to you. But the, the, the method for doing it would just be the same as this. You would just copy and paste this branch here. Add them in, repeat, repeat, repeat. But assuming that it has found an email address, then we need to send it. And in instantly, we're just making a post call to add a lead to a campaign. So we have the campaign ID, we have their email address, first name, last name, company name, website, all of this information we've mapped to the separate items. And then it will just send them through. So here we can see I've, I've run it once, it's succeeded, it's sent them in, and it has made, uh, made it into the instantly plan. And here, the campaign ID, if we take a step back. So this is from when we are setting up a campaign and we have our drop-down box. Oops, this is the clients, not campaigns. This is campaigns. So when we set up the client, when we set up the campaign, we have the drop-down box where we just choose the instantly campaign we want to send them to, pre-fills it with the campaign ID, and that is what it will get sent to. So it makes it a very, very smooth process where you can just basically do it from within Airtable. So once you have the NA10 set up, means you don't have to jump into instantly all the time. It's just all manageable in Airtable. It'll get sent through and then it'll add the record to the CRM. So here, basically, it will just um, add into the people pack the person's name, the Apollo ID, campaign ID, um, the photo, photo department. So any, any extra information that you want, you just have to um, create a column for it in the people tab here of the, uh, of the uh, Airtable and then just uh, map the data that you get to the one that you want. So a very, very, very simple process. Um, the only thing I would say about Airtable in this case, so here I'm sending them to a campaign and I want to match it to let them know that they were from this campaign. Uh, within NA10, so this is just a little hack at the end. Within NA10, Apollo, um, sorry, Airtable is sometimes a little bit, uh, is this little bit, um, temperamental in terms of uh, mapping to things which are linked records. So what you'll do is, if that's the case, if it's telling you there's a little, uh, there's a little lockbox saying you, you, can't, you, can't, um, you can't change this value, you just copy the, uh, the module like this and you open up a text edit file. Okay, oops, let me just move this to the right window. Okay, and then you copy and paste it into here. And then when you scroll up, you'll find, for example, the, the, the column that you want. So this is Apollo ID, this is notes, this is last modified, opportunities, dates, all of this. You'll find the column that you can't quite manage to change. And then where it says read only, oh, here's a good example, this one here. So this is to do with the client. So let's just say that I wanted to also to match this is the client. I'll just change it from read only true to read only false. Okay, copy it, select it all, copy it put it back into the NA10, press control V, and you'll see I have this brand new Airtable record. And if I now come down to, what was it I changed, clients? Yeah, so here I can create my own clients. Uh, and in this one here where, it, where it's set to, to read only, client is not changeable. So it's a very, very, very un, un life changing hack, not even a hack, just a tip, but still pretty useful. So in any case, what is the end result here? It means that if you have, for example, uh, you know, uh, six clients and each client has five campaigns. That's 30 different campaigns you're running. Uh, you know, you just put in the information, uh, select an instantly campaign. And as long as it's marked as active, it will start adding people to the CRM in the background immediately. And then once the campaign has finished, or when I say campaign is finished, once there are no more people to find. So once this progress gets to 100%, basically, it will just stop running. Um, and then so you don't have to keep on sending reminders, jump in, jump out, turn on, turn off. So very, very simple process. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like it, like and subscribe. Uh, this is in my school community, uh, probably also my gum road. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching.